Welcome friends. I'm glad you're here. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I am um, working on a geode and I thought that I would bring you along to show you my process. Um, so I have an 18 inch round that I am preparing. Um, prep is the most important work when you're doing something of this nature. Um, so I'm just taping off the back area so that uh, any drips um, over the board will be easily removed uh, once I peel the tape up. And so I'm just going to go here and um, tape all of that through. Before this video, I went ahead and put two um, or three layers of Gesso Prime, clear Gesso Prime, on my um, surface that I'll have the geode on and what this does is basically prepare the wood surface uh, for paint and um, it helps to seal that wood so that it eliminates um, several of the bubbles w because wood is porous it will create a lot of bubbles in your resin if you're not careful not something you want on a geode all right, so um, after I put my, my um, um, <laughs> gesso on my board, I put two layers of uh, Lucas Krill Studio uh, beige paint on the front of it, and um, so it's ready to go as soon as I finish taping this off here. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, welcome. And um, if you are back again, welcome back. I really appreciate you um, tuning back in. It means the world to me and my channel. I would appreciate it if you would um, show me a little love, give me a thumbs up, and um, leave any comments. I love seeing your comments. And um, any, any interaction that we have here, on my videos and on my YouTube channel really does help my channel to grow. So new subscribers would be greatly appreciated as well. And um, just hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for all and you'll be given notifications when my next video uh, is, is loaded. So I'm just taking my X-Acto knife here and I'm going around and I'm trimming <clears throat> the tape um, along the, uh, the edge that I'm trying to protect. And um, again, it's, it's part of the necessary process in order to have a neat, uh, orderly effect on your geode. All right, and there we are, um, ready to go. So here what I'm doing is um, just beginning to create my geode-like areas. Um, I'm plugging in my hot glue gun and I have some rose quartz and crystal quartz points and <clears throat> I'm gonna be attaching those to my board. The hot glue helps these to the points to stand up um, and it's a temporary situation until your resin is on and cures at which point it will be permanently affixed. These quartz uh, points came from um, Dryer Day's art studio and they are gorgeous quality. The rose quartz stones, I had them for quite some time. I want to say that I got them from off of Amazon, um, but I honestly am not 
100% sure on that, but Amazon, you know how that is. You can get whatever you want off of Amazon. Um, so I'm just going to set up a couple of different areas with my um, geode stations. And you want to keep in mind that um, for this round geo that you have a curvature that you want to try to incorporate into these stations. It makes it look a little bit softer, a little bit better. So just a slight curve. Okay, so these um, clear stones that I'm putting in and around the crystals uh, is just clear fire glass. It's unmirrored. Um, All right, and now we're ready to pour. Um, I have mixed up about 12 ounces. I'm using, using Total Boat Epoxy, and um, there's about a 25 minute work time. So um, even though this video has been sped up, it is has not been sped up as much as you think. Um, so you have to have everything you know, ready to go when you mix the Total Boat resin. Um, so right now I'm just putting some of the, the clear resin over top of all of my stone stations here and um, making sure that I hit all of the top surface so that it will run down uh, through the stones and to the board making contact with that board surface and adhering the stones permanently. And you can tell when you've got it all covered because the stones become very glassy looking, very clear. All right, so um, my pigments today are sand from Lorez. I purchased that from uh, Laura's art studio. And um, I'm also using the hold on a minute i've got my thing right here angel white also from lorez um, which is both of those are pigment pastes i have my iridron pale gold beautiful beautiful um, gold um, i also purchased that from laura's art studio and antique lace from color is part of the color joy collection at um, dryer days art studio So this is the sand that I'm laying down now. And you can see that, you know, the resin is already quite thick. It's staying pretty much where I lay it and um, very easy to do what I want it to do right now. So 
so this resin is perfect for this process. Uh, if you use a, a thinner resin, um, then a lot of your resin is going to run off the sides. Because this is a, a thicker resin, it's, it, it will stay put, plus you've got a less working time, and it thickens as it sits there and waits for you to go. So there I'm just adding my um, antique lace, one of my favorite pigments from um, the Color Joy line at Dryer Days Art Studio. And I really only mixed up a very small amount. It, it mixes and blends well with the colors that I'm using here. Um, the angel white and sand pigments are um, very opaque and flat. There is no pearlescence to them. This is what I wanted. I wanted something with more of a neutral um, look to it. All right, so here I've mixed my Iridron Pale Gold and I'm just running uh, lines of that along the geode. And this is, <clears throat> pardon me, this is a floating gold and um, it, because my resin has thickened here, um, you're not going to see it happen without a lot of coaxing from my heat gun. but. Um, you can run a straight line as I've done here when the resin is thicker, which is great. And or you can blow out this gold and it and it just makes the prettiest gold um, feathering on top of your surface and just floats there. I wasn't 100% sure how much of my resin I was going to need. Um, 12 ounces was the perfect amount for this. I had actually very little runoff um, for such a, a, a larger project. And here I'm just making sure that um, I'm trying to encourage the gold to spread just a little bit. Um, I don't want it to go crazy, but uh, I do want it, as you can see there, to kind of open up and spread a little bit for me. Now be careful, you don't want to burn your resin. You don't want to, you want to keep that heat gun moving at all times. And now I'm just trying to capture some of my edges. Um, I want this geo to to run over my edges. Um, and so I really had to work for that process to happen because, as I said, I didn't have that much runoff. And what runoff I did have, I picked up and used to tap along those edges um, to make sure that they were covered. I cannot say enough about the Iridron Gold. It is, it is a favorite pigment of mine. I absolutely love it. There are, um, this is the pale gold I'm using. There are other golds and the, the silver as well, but it just makes the most beautiful effects in resin.
just adding a little bit more of that um, angel white. I'm sorry, not angel white, but my antique lace there. Um, the antique lace is a <clears throat> mica, and it does have a more frosty appearance, and so I really wanted just a little bit of, of frost as you shift um, the piece when it's done. I, I didn't want everything to be, I wanted more of a an opaque, um, flat effect with just hints of that iridescence or um, frostiness. Don't be afraid to try these. They're they're quite easy. Um, the hardest part is getting your materials together, having your design in your mind, what colors you want. Um, this isn't something you want to fly by the seat of your pants on because it does require expensive materials. Um, just have a plan in place. Um, you can draw it out on the wood with a um, a chalk pencil beforehand if you really want to see what your piece is going to look like. Um, the resin will totally cover that up. Uh, so take a chance and, and, um, and see what you can do. Here I'm just adding some liquid gold around the borders of my uh, stone sec sections. And that really does um, bring a lot more attention to the geo portions of this um, board. Just using up what little bit of resin I have left in my um, in my cups, making sure that my edges are covered. Now, in the end, I found that um, the liquid gold uh, ran off of my stones a little more than what I would like. So, on my next coat, I will more than likely go in and remove or cover some of that and um, just a little bit of it. Going back in with my Aerodron. You see me picking up um, from the runoff and just tapping along those edges make resin goes where resin is and so um, if there's not a place for the resin to run towards other resin then it's, it's not going to so you sometimes you have to encourage it by just tapping a little bit more resin on there and uh, bring you in for a close-up here I hope that you've enjoyed this process and um, you can see here where the gold kind of <laughs> it went crazy. I like I like um, the effects of the gold on the stone, but um, the runoff was a little bit much, and so I'm going to go back in with um, another layer and cover some of that 
part up. Um, but it, it turned out just gorgeous and very happy with it. I hope you've learned something. Um, tell me what colors you'd like to see on my next one. And I'll try to see if I can get that done for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And um, have you ever done any geodes? And um, tell, me, tell me some of the things you like to do when you're creating a geode. Lots of fun. Once you have all your supplies done and your prep done, the process doesn't take very long at all, guys. And there it is. Thanks for watching.